All right, guys, today we're gonna to be talking about a mini excavator and we're gonna talk about different uses it has. First, we're gonna do a circle check of the machine to make sure that all the fluids are good. We're also gonna check the tracks to make sure that they're good. And we're gonna show you some basic functions before we get rolling on what it can actually do. All right, so we're looking at the tracks right now. We wanna make sure that with the tracks, they don't have any defiant breaks in them so that we can ensure we can use this machine without any breakdowns. One thing to check with your tracks also is the track tension. If you see that it's too loose, refer to the operator's manual on it to make sure we can put the correct amount of tension on the track. There are different ways to actually tighten the track as well. Some are with a grease fitting and some are also with manual uh, locks on it that you will actually have to use a socket set for. Welcome to the engine compartment of the mini excavator. We're gonna show you a couple things back here. We're gonna start off with the fluid levels of the machine. The first thing we can blatantly see is the coolant level, showing that it is at an adequate level for operating it. Although it is a little below the full line, that is because we've had this engine warm already. And some of the excess fill is already in the radiator of the machine. Next, we're gonna look at the engine oil component. You pull out the yellow dipstick right here to show the oil level on it, which it shows full. And after that, on the mini excavators, you wanna check your fuel filters. There are a couple primary filters in here. You have a water fuel separator, you have a primary fuel filter, and you have your oil filters. You wanna make sure that they are free of leaks and debris. One thing to note on your water fuel separator, you will see a clear liquid that looks like water in the water fuel separator. In order to drain that on this particular excavator, you actually have to remove the filter out and manually drain the water. After ensuring that all of them are in the on position so that fuel can flow properly through the machine, you should be clear to run the machine. Another thing to show you back here in the engine compartment though, is how to switch it from ISO and ASE controls. This needs to be done while the machine is off because this is changing the entire hydraulic flow of the machine to the joysticks of what each one does. This is located very far back here in the machine. Uh, it may be a little hard to see on camera, but at the bottom left, there's a red toggle switch where you can manually twist it left and right to switch it on the controls. And this will switch your controls on the joysticks for you. The next thing we're gonna look at is gonna be the hydraulic connections on this to ensure they're free of leaks. When you're doing that, just go through the fittings and ensure that all of them are at least hand tight to your description and make sure you don't feel any fluid levels on the machine to make sure that it's clear of it. If you do notice a leak, most of the time you can fix it with an adjustable wrench. However, if it is outside of your comfort area to fix that, call us and we will send out a service tech to get it fixed for you. After moving past checking to see if it's free of leaks, we'll move up here to the top of the boom arm. Typically, if you're gonna be running an attachment, you would have a quick connect fitting here, which would allow an attachment such as a breaker attachment or a tamper attachment to be quick connected right here. Being that this one is not equipped for that and it does not have a thumb, this is plugged off to prevent any kind of hydraulic leak while the machine is in operation. The next thing we're gonna go over is the fuel fill cap. Most equipment models and makes are equipped with a key on the fuel cap to prevent any kind of siphoning or compromisation of the equipment in their fuel system. If you turn it and unlock it, you will then be able to twist this off and pull off the fuel cap. When you put it back on and you put it in the locked position, you now cannot turn it. The last thing we're gonna look at is the fuel gauge. This particular machine is equipped with a regular fuel gauge and a needle so that you can see what your fuel levels are on the machine. Please note, if the machine is showing empty, check the fuel tank to make sure that it has fuel in it before operating it. We're now in the operations area of the mini excavator. The first thing we're gonna look at are the drive sticks. Forward is forward, back is back. It's only forward when you're actually facing the leveling blade. Right now, if I wanted to go forward, I would have to pull backwards. If you wanna make a right turn, you push the right stick forward and pull the left stick back. If you wanna turn left, you push the left stick forward and pull the right stick back. The next little pedal, which is right here by my right foot, 
This articulates the excavator arm itself in case you need to get into a little bit tighter area to dig. And then over here, our left joystick, this controls the turntable by turning it left and right, which would allow the entire machine to swing left or right. And then if you pull it backward or forward, this controls the main boom arm of the digging operation part of the excavator. Over on the right joystick, this part controls your bucket functions as far as being able to twist it in and out and also raising and lowering the main boom arm. If you twist it to your left, this brings the bucket towards you and bring it in like you're doing a curl. If you turn it to the right, at that point, the bucket goes outward. If you point it forward, this brings the boom arm down to the ground. When you pull it up, this brings it back up to you. This gray button is the safety horn on it in case you need to notify somebody on the job site. This switch right here is for your leveling blade. If you press it forward, it will bring the blade down. If you pull it back, it will bring the blade up so that you're not dragging dirt while transporting it. Over here is your throttle. If you pull it back, like I just did, this would raise your RPMs up on the machine. When you put it forwards, that puts it into an idle. And over here is the key so that you can start the machine. When using an excavator, always make sure to be aware of your surroundings and you have called the proper channels before digging. Make sure there are no underground utilities such as water, sewer, or electrical fiber optic. Right here in this clip, you're gonna see where I'm moving down some trees. Always make sure you have the right size excavator to actually take down the trees. Pine trees, for an example, right here are very rubbery and they have a bad tendency of just wanting to bend. So you need to get yourself centered on the tree to where you can break it and snap the trunk down lower below you. Keep in mind also while operating the machine with open rops or the rollover protection area, you do run the risk of a limb snapping back and hitting you as the operator. So that is something to always keep in mind. The front blade on the machine there, always try to keep it down if you can. It helps a lot with your stability. And other than that, just make sure that your placement on your bucket is where it needs to be at so you don't accidentally clip the tree and it come back at you. We don't have an attachment available for us today, but if we did, what you would do, you would start off by removing the snap pins out from the bucket, and you would take these main pins and push them out from there. After that, you would hook up your attachment piece, such as a breaker, a tamper, whatever the case may be. And when you use the same setup to hook everything back in, once you have it hooked back in, if you have a hydraulic attachment and the machine is hooked up for the hydraulic attachment, you would simply run your hoses up the boom arm to where the said disconnect piece would be at so that you could run your auxiliary attachment. This is a 4,000 pound mini excavator for size comparison. Mini excavators range from a one ton mini excavator all the way up to a nine ton mini excavator. Or for poundage reasons, we say 2,000 pounds to 18,000 pounds. Common uses for mini excavator have a variety of different things that we have to use them for. Common uses are digging foundations and footings for houses, having to dig out an area for new construction or just to dig a hole to plant plants. And after that, up to an 18,000 pound excavator, those can be used for a variety of things, including small land clearing jobs. And while using the grading blade down at the bottom, we can also grade small areas of land with it as well. This mini excavator is equipped with a front blade on it. This blade's actual purpose is a leveling blade. When you put it down into the ground, if you're operating on a slope, this puts the machine in a more comfortable and stable environment while you dig, so you don't run the risk of flipping over. Its other use is actually a grading blade. If you've dug out a trench and you need to backfill it, you can use this for pushing small amounts of dirt to backfill a spot that you've dug up. In closing, I hope that we've been able to answer some of your questions on this to make you feel more comfortable while operating this machine. 
And also to give you kind of a difference idea and size comparisons for different machines down the road of your upcoming projects. If you ever need any help with any of this, always reach out to the Dozer team and we'll be able to help you.